Think you know everything about Christopher Columbus and Christopher Columbus Day? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. Hi, I'm Sharon Gilbert, and I have followed the shepherd since I was a child. He led me through music and medicine and academics and all sorts of wonderful paths, but you know, my choices weren't always good ones. However, in 1997, he turned all those life choices into a wonderful marriage to my perfect partner and from there into full-time ministry. Following Jesus' steps means more than being obedient. It means gaining spiritual muscle. It means putting on the full armor of God. So let's take the next steps together, shall we? Suited up and ready to follow as the shepherd's armored sheep. Hi, I'm Sharon Gilbert, and welcome to The Armored Sheep. I'm so, so glad you guys have chosen to join me once again for this adventure. You know, many of you sent me emails and commented on the video, sent us private notes through Messenger, and just told us, even through purchases at our Gilbert House store, how much you enjoyed the first episode. Seriously, you have no idea how much that means to me, especially since it's contrary to the type of of appearances, let's put it that way, that I have been trained to to uh, to do my entire life in theater and in, in opera, um, in television. It's always been, okay, you put on your best face, best face forward, which means makeup. Well, I still can't wear any. Eyes much better. Thank you for your prayers. But uh, you, the fact that many of you said it doesn't matter if you have makeup on or not, Oh, you have no idea how freeing that is. Ladies, you probably do, because each time we record a program either here in our Gilbert House barn or in Crane at the Skywatch TV studios, or we go elsewhere, I have to wear makeup because it's expected. The lights are usually very bright and can really wash you out, so I put on some makeup, but lately I can't wear it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if any of you have recommendations for hypoallergenic um, eye makeup, boy, I'd love to hear about it. I've tried a few products in my life and never really found one that worked. So I'd really love to know if you have found something that does. Okay, Christopher Columbus. Today is Christopher Columbus Day. And if you're my age, you know all the stuff we learned when we were children. We Every time a holiday would come around, we would get these beautiful coloring pages that have been mimeographed on a mimeograph machine. And if you don't know what that is, then you're not my age. Um, They were blue ink upon a white background, and there was a a smell to them, which was mimeograph fluid. And it had a very recognizable smell. In fact, there are some people I knew who, well, they got a little bit addicted to it because it, for some reason, really kind of smelled good. We'll just leave it there. Um, one of the pages that we often colored every year in October, October 12, uh, we would color the pages for Christopher Columbus. Now, we have in the United States moved to all holidays on a Monday, which is a shame because it's combined Lincoln and Washington birthdays into just one holiday. And I think that's tragic. I can hear Gloria in the background, so we're going to try to get through this without her barking too much. Um, Christopher Columbus No, he did not land upon the main body of the United States. He did not. He landed in what he called the West Indies. He was trying to find a quicker way to get to India. But 1492, he sailed the ocean blue, as we all memorized. And he discovered land in our hemisphere that made that year the beginning of the Western Hemisphere's eventual domination, especially the United States, of the world geopolitics. Um, What I find so interesting about the story that I just discovered, just came out yesterday morning, is that, did you know that recent genetic analyses of Christopher Columbus's body from a grave that is now recognized by most scholars as being his grave, and comparing that to his son's grave, which had been known and agreed upon, the two are indeed from the same family. So it does show that the son and the father have the same DNA. 
the Y chromosome shows, as well as the mitochondrial DNA, which comes from the mother, both show indicators that reveal Christopher Columbus was at least part Sephardic Jew. Now, the irony there is that in 1492, the crown in Spain evicted, kicked out with great prejudice, anyone who was unwilling to convert to Catholicism. It's a well-known, accepted fact that Christopher Columbus practiced Christianity. He practiced Catholicism. And one thing that he wanted to do was to claim these new lands for Spain and for the Lord. He, in, I could still hear glory, he, in his diaries, made it clear that also that he was, he believed, following the Lord's leading. And that's entirely possible because the Western Hemisphere, again, has become such a huge part of history over the last 500 years or so. Now, if indeed, as the reports seem to indicate, and this needs to be replicated, in other words, scientists need to come in, use the same methods, and get the same results. That's the way it's supposed to be in science. You don't just blindly accept what someone says. So if indeed Christopher Columbus was part of Sephardic Jew, now wouldn't that be interesting? Because it would mean that the United States, according to our own historical accepted beginnings of this nation, was discovered by a Jew. Considering what's going on in Israel right now and also taking into account some of the misinformation and in some cases disinformation that is being spread online about the nation of Israel, um, it makes it even more interesting that so much of that is coming, so much of replacement theology is coming from the United States, also coming from Great Britain. Great Britain was one of the great uh, colonizers of these United States, um, along with Spain, of course, and France. Parts were also sort of populated by whales and even the Nordic countries. In fact, it may be that the Nordic countries, the, the Vikings, were the first to set foot here. Unless, and this is one of those tinfoil hat things, unless the first to set foot here were actually Semitic peoples. There are some inscriptions that have been discovered, and the writing seems to indicate a proto-Hebrew Semitic origin to the person and or persons who wrote these inscriptions. Does that mean that Jews were the first to land here? Not necessarily. It may mean, though, that some Semitic peoples like the Amorites landed here, which I think is another really interesting point because Derek and I, as you are well aware, have done a lot of research on the Amorites. And it all began when we came across that scripture that taught where the Lord said that the sin of the Amorites is not yet complete. If, indeed, we are living in times that approach the, the end result of the sin of the Amorites, that it is about to be completed, it may mean that the Amorite peoples and the many countries where they colonized and with whom they traded have something to do with coming against Israel. Food for thought, isn't it? Well, I want to remind you again that gilberthouse.org not only has all of these articles there that are excerpted from our books, we also, of course, have the Gilbert House store, and we've got a special this month that I hope you will take advantage of, and here it is right now. Our new book, The Gates of Hell, is available now, and we have a special offer on it at the Gilbert House store. You know, you're not going to find a deal like this anywhere else. You're going to get the book, which is a $21.95 value. You're going to get three 
DVD. More than 12 hours of video content plus the book for just $45. That's half price. That's half price because the whole package of retail is over $90. The Gates of Hell tackles mysteries like where was Jesus baptized and why did he choose to get baptized in a place known as the Land of the Serpent? Oh my goodness, you want this deal. This is the kind of thing that you can share with your friends, share with your pastor, read again, because trust me, the, the source information that Derek and I used for this you're not going to find it anywhere else. Right. It's not just an archaeological or historical curiosity. It is relevant to us today. Again, a special offer for the month of October only at gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back and thank you again for, well, for being part of this flock. Um, I love Psalms 23 and in it, David refers to the Lord is my shepherd, but what the language actually says there is Yahweh is my shepherd. Yahweh, the creator, Yahweh, the Messiah, Yahweh in, in this picture of the perfect good shepherd leading us through easy places, then uphill to some difficult places. He's training us along that path to wear the armor. See this little back here, the Roman helmet? That's the kind of helmet that Paul was talking about. Now, that helmet doesn't fit me very well. I have, well, it's a little big, but the helmet of righteousness is upon my head at all times. So I am always protected, and your head being the one place you do not want to take a blow. Our Lord is training us to wear the armor that he has designed specifically for you and me to wear. And my prayer for you is that as you follow the good shepherd, that you will listen only to his voice, that you follow only his footsteps. Because as I told you last, month, last week, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. They've all led me to where I am now, but I, man, I think that the Lord would have brought me here regardless he just took those crazy paths that I chose and worked them all together for good. I would have gotten here more directly probably if I just followed him in the first place with all of those free will choices. So my prayer for you is that you always follow him. Don't follow wolf tracks. Don't follow the bad shepherd. Oh, if you didn't know that, there is a bad shepherd. We'll talk about that next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. I look forward to meeting with you again next week, the flock getting together, following our shepherd. God bless you all. Bye-bye.